Now our next topic is anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. These are eating disorders that uh, due to psychiatric reasons. What is anorexia nervosa? Significant weight loss due to self food restrictions because the patient always seeks to become thin and terrified of being obese. She has uh, anxiety or nervousness about getting obese. That's why she developed anorexia that she does not eat anything. So self food restriction, excessive exercise, self induced vomiting, laxatives and diuretic misuse. In a patient with anorexia nervosa, there's usually an intense drive for thinness. The patient always seek to become thin and terrified of being obese. Uh, some signs such as thickened calluses can be found. Thickened calluses are uh, hard uh, bony nodules that can be found on the dorsum of the hand because uh, due to injury during self-induced vomiting. Because continuous touching of the dorsum of the hand uh, during uh, self-induced vomiting with the teeth, uh, there's uh, usually formation of calluses on the dorsum of the hand. Now, what is bulimia nervosa? Repeated episodes of uncontrolled overeating. So in anorexia nervosa, the person uh, usually does not eat anything because it is anorexia. He, she, she does not eat anything. She perform excessive exercise and she uh, do self-induced vomiting and misuse of laxative and diuretics. While in bulimia nervosa, uh, the person has bouts of eating, bouts of overeating, followed by a feeling of guilty. So in bulimia nervosa initially, uh, there will be bouts of eating that is followed by feeling of guilty and thus to uh, reduce this feeling of guilt uh, as a compensation the person will do excessive fasting excessive exercise self-induced vomiting laxative and diuretic misuse so this is a, a minor uh, difference or only difference between anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa that in anorexia nervosa uh, the person usually does not eat anything. While in bulimia nervosa, the person gets bouts of uncontrolled overeating, uh, which is followed by guilt and uh, food restriction, excessive exercise, self-induced vomiting. So excessive eating, guilt, and weight loss mechanisms. Thickened calluses can be found in both of them. Similarly, a parotid swelling can be found in both of them, but it is more common in bulimia nervosa because of repetitive stimulation of the parotid gland during the episodes of overeating and then uh, induced vomiting. Parotid gland can be hyperstimulated, which lead to bilateral enlargement of the parotid gland. So the person uh, will have bilateral parotid swelling. Now, uh, because the person is not eating a food restriction and using laxative and diuretic misuse and excessive exercise, so these features can be present. That is hypotension, enlarged salivary glands, reduced body mass index. In, uh, in anorexia nervosa, BMI is usually less than 17.5, while uh, in bulimia nervosa, BMI is usually in the normal range, that is above 17.5. The other features, they include hypotension and large salivary glands, reduced body mass index and bradycardia. Other uh, physiological abnormalities that can be present due to low diet, they include hypercholesterolemia because of increased cholesterol, Easter transfer protein. 
which transfer the cholesterol from lipoproteins to the serum so that's why the person will get hypercholesterolemia uh, and hyperkeratinemia why hyperkeratinemia keratin is present in the vegetables so hyperkeratinemia can occur in a neuroxia nervosa uh, due to increase intake of keratin containing vegetables which give a yellow tint to the skin so that's why hypercholesterolemia and hyperkeratinemia and due to no diet and no energy and no atp and no metabolites for the formation of uh, uh, these hormones such as t3 so t3 will be low hypokalemia can occur due to excessive self induced vomiting low fsh lh estrogen and low testosterone and because the person is not eating which will lead to low glucose level and low glucose will stimulate uh, production of growth hormone and cortisol because these hormones they are released during uh, the stress or hypoglycemia so that hypoglycemia can be corrected so cortisol and growth hormone will be raised so three things will be raised that is hypercholesterolemia hypercretinemia and cortisol and growth hormone they will be raised and other things will be low as we discussed that repeated contact of the fingers with teeth during self induced vomiting episode can lead to the formation of calluses this is uh, this uh, formation of the calluses on the dorsum of the hand uh, this is known as a russell sign so this is a second name for the thickened calluses formation on the dorsum of the hand now a table of bmi normal bmi normal weight is between the ranges of 18.5 to 24.9 in anorexia nervosa uh, the bmi is usually less than 17.5 or the person is usually underweight <clears throat> now what is the management of anorexia nervosa uh, the management of anorexia nervosa depends upon two things one is uh, the bmi of the patient and the other is uh, medical problems that can be present in a patient with anorexia nervosa so if the bmi of the patient is less than 15 then we'll refer urgently to medical ward the bmi is less than uh, 15 and there's evidence of systemic failure or if any medical complications are present such as electrolyte abnormalities hypotension etc then we'll refer the patient ur urgently to medical ward or pediatric ward so that the patient can be stabilized first and if there is severe electrolyte imbalance bradycardia and hypoglycemia uh, no matter whatever the bmi is again we'll refer the patient to medical ward so uh, from this two point we can see that whenever uh, medical complications are present or the bmi is less than 15 then uh, we'll refer the patient to medical ward to stabilize him first and if the bmi is less than 15 without any medical complication then we will refer the patient urgently to an eating disorder unit because if there are no medical complication then there is uh, nothing to treat in the medical ward so that's why because the bmi is less than 15 we'll refer the patient to a an eating disorder unit and we will refer urgently to an eating disorder unit and if the bmi is between 15 to 17.5 then uh, we'll routinely refer the patient to eating disorder unit and if there is a severe self harm or high risk of suicide then uh, we'll admit the patient to psychiatric ward and if the bmi is uh, more than 17.5 then you do not treat and need to refer the patient to an eating disorder unit uh, you will build a trusting relationship with the patient encourage the patient to use self help books and a food diary 
so this was all about the management of anorexia nervosa that is if uh, uh, the patient has patient have medical complications such as electrolyte abnormalities bradycardia hypoglycemia hypotension then we will admit the patient to medical ward to stabilize the patient first and if the bmi is less than 15 without any medical complications then we'll urgently refer the patient to an eating disorder unit. And if the BMI is between uh, 15 to 17.5, then we'll routinely refer the patient to an eating disorder unit. And if the BMI is more than 17.5, then we'll build a trusting relationship and uh, encourage the patient to use self-help books and food diary. And if there's uh, severe self-harm or high risk of suicide, then we'll admit the patient to an acute psychiatric ward. So why is there hyper, uh, hypercholesterolemia? What is the cause of hypercholesterolemia in this? Hypercholesterolemia is uh, because the patient is not eating and uh, cholesterol is required for the formation of cell membranes and hormones like uh, steroids, uh, uh, such as testosterone, estrogen, etc. So that's why uh, the cholesterol or fat is mobilized uh, by the enzyme. Uh, that is uh, cholesterol ester transfer. This enzyme is increased. Activity of this enzyme increased. That is increased cholesterol ester transfer protein, CETP. The activity of this enzyme is increased, which mobilizes the fat from adipocytes to the plasma. That's why there is hypercholesterolemia. Another question is regarding the patient. For example, if the patient, they see one of the doctors and uh, the patient has a BMI of less than 15. So first, uh, when the patient is seen, uh, uh, we, we refer straight away urgently to medical ward or we do these electrolyte uh, uh, checkups and uh, about the bradycardia and then we refer to the... Uh, yes, of course, first of all, we... Uh, we'll check if there are any medical complication present or not. If they are present, then we'll admit to the medical ward. If they are not present, then we'll refer her urgently to an eating disorder unit. We will only admit her to the ward or to the medical ward if she has any medical complication. And she okay. just come to you with a history of uh, this anorexia nervosa and her BMI is less than 15 and no matter whatever her BMI is. We will always check uh, the electrolytes, uh, the systemic signs and symptoms, blood pressure, etc. And then you will refer her to an eating disorder unit if there are no medical complications. Thank you. So the most prevalent cause of death in patient with anorexia nervosa is due to cardiac complication. Because due to electrolyte imbalances, electrolyte disturbances, uh, the person can develop bradycardia and heart failure. So the most common cause of death in the patient with anorexia nervosa is cardiac complication. This was a, a, an important key point uh, that you need to remember for anorexia nervosa.